Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blog cast. This is episode 204. And I was going to be doing a whole different blog cast today, like up until a few hours ago. Uh, I thought I was going to be recording the sort of next blog in the order. Um, but I didn't, I sort of missed my window to record the song. Um, and the more I thought about it, the more it seemed like this one might be good to just go ahead and send forth. Uh, it feels really fresh. Um, maybe, I don't know if I mean that in a good way or a bad way. It's just like, that's what's happening. Like I, we just cut this one off the tree and, uh, I don't know. I don't know about it. I don't know. Um, but it is happening right now. Um, although it happened a few days ago and things are changing so fast. Things are moving so quickly that uh, it feels like, oh, I, was, is this still current from a few days ago? I don't know. But I, I, I feel like it might be better to do it now than to wait, you know, the month that it would probably be before I got to this one. The disadvantage of doing this one right now is that it feels a little raw for me. <laughs> so there might be some stopping and starting as I record this, but there, there often is. So that's fine. So let's just get into it. Here it is. It is called You're Late. I'm Late. Let's get to work. I don't know what to say right now. <laughs> We're in a revolution which was long overdue, and I feel invigorated and glad that changes are already being made in some way, in some places. I also feel terrified and alarmed by the power of the police state, which is acting out in the worst possible of fascist ways all over the country, and particularly in my city. The NYPD used terrorist tactics and ran their SUVs right into a crowd of protesters, and our motherfucking useless-ass pseudo-progressive mayor, who ran on a platform of stopping this horror show policing, defended them. In Charlottesville, town of my birth, a few short years ago, a white supremacist terrorist murdered a woman and injured many more doing the same thing. That guy was convicted and sentenced for the murder he committed. Here... In this police state of New York City, we got a curfew instead of arrests of those SUV cops. This curfew allows the police to arrest anyone at their pleasure as soon as the sun starts going down. Last night in the Bronx, they penned in a group of protesters 20 minutes before the curfew and then proceeded to pepper spray and beat them before arresting them. They took them in a hot, crowded transport to a whole different borough in the middle of this pandemic. And all of this is just the tip of the fucking iceberg. Am I stirred up about it? You bet. We need these cops off the street immediately, like now. Their unfettered violence needs to end. There are so many activists who have been working on this stuff for ages, and sure, we should have been helping them before. And we're late, but we can still pitch in. I keep thinking about how whenever I've been late to a rehearsal, say, and everyone's super pissed that I'm late, and I feel bad that I'm late, but at a certain point, we just have to let it go and get to work. I don't decide to give up and go home just because everyone's mad I'm late. And we can't waste any more time talking about how late we are. I feel like right now I'm seeing a lot of my white friends wringing their hands and self-flagellating. And you know, sure, you're late. You didn't get it before. You didn't understand what Black Lives Matter was actually trying to tell you. So you're late. And some people are pissed at you for being late. I'm late too. Or maybe I was on time. I retweeted some of the first Black Lives Matter tweets. That makes me on time, right? Didn't I show up on time? My God, it's embarrassing how much I want to have been on time. 
but maybe I failed to learn my lines or bring my props. I didn't put my body on the line or call my reps. In any case, we're all fucking late and people have a right to be pissed off about it. But now it's just time to go to work. Interestingly, I'm noticing that my friends and family in Charlottesville aren't doing quite as much hand-wringing as the rest of the country. And protests there have gone smoothly. Without incident. It feels to me, from 500 miles away at least, that Charlottesville, having gone through the reckoning of 2017, has learned that it just needs to get down to work. And that statue of Robert E. Lee that was the beacon that summoned all those white supremacists will likely finally come down. The bad guys there gave up their dumb campaign. The governor ordered a similar statue removed in the Capitol. There's hope in there. There's hope in a lot of things. And some of it is complicated as hell. For example, here in NYC... We have these things on the street that Google paid to have installed. We call them propaganda sticks because they broadcast messages and images 24-7 and are also surveillance devices. Before I stopped being able to touch my face, when I passed one, I touched my nose in the classic gesture of, I know what you're up to. If I was going to be caught up in a surveillance net, I wanted them to see me seeing them do it. I would not be surprised to have confirmed that all the cute little trivia and art that shows up on those things is just there to make people look at it so they can get better facial recognition data. As you can see, I am not a fan of the propaganda sticks. I'm concerned about all the ways they could be used for ill. I don't trust Google not to be evil just because they once had a catchphrase reminding them not to do it, And I don't trust New York to protect anyone's privacy. This week, the propaganda sticks are slowly just flashing the names of people who have been murdered by police around the country. It's a black screen with each person's name in white. And even though I hate those propaganda sticks, it's actually very moving. And we thought the sticks had maybe even been hacked by an activist group which would have been cool. They have been hacked in many interesting ways before, but no, it's an official Link NYC thing. But even so, it's moving. I about lost it in the street when Tamir Rice's name went by. And then Eric Garner's name came up. And on one hand, It is amazing that the city is broadcasting an acknowledgement of these murdered people. And on the other hand, this is the same city that allowed Eric Garner to be murdered by police in the first place and then did absolutely nothing about it for five years. You don't get to have your death agents murder a man for selling cigarettes and then flash his name in protest like you had nothing to do with it. Is Eric Garner's name flashing on the propaganda stick next to the police assembling their riot shields and tear gas? It could be. And is that good? Does it remind them to do the right thing? Or does it just incite their violence further? Given what we've seen so far, I'd guess the latter. Everything is just intersecting right now, and I'm not going to lie, I'm a little freaked out. The police state, the surveillance state, the capitalist state, the digital dominance. A few years ago, I was in a cafe when everyone's phones started making alarming sounds all at once. It was an alert that a snowstorm was coming, and I found myself disturbed by the reach of this alert. I worried this might be used for ill in the future. I could imagine a future when our proto-fascist president turned full-fledged fascist and would broadcast his cruel messages to all our devices at once. Then this week, we got alerts that New Yorkers were under curfew and we had to be in by 11 p.m. 
The next day, there was another alert, declaring all New Yorkers needed to be in our homes by 8 p.m., and it would last all week. Meanwhile, most of us have been stuck in our homes for two and a half months due to the virus. And that's when I figured out how to turn off my alerts. So if there's a genuine emergency and not just our local government acting like dictators, please call me to let me know, as I have now opted out of state-sponsored communication. While protesters are able to track police using things like the Citizen app, the police are also able to track protesters through their phones. Anyway, there's another place to get to work because wouldn't you know, black activists are vulnerable to being labeled black identity extremist, which is a thing the FBI made up to track black activists. And they are certainly using all the digital means at their disposal to surveil the people who have been doing such important work. There are layers and layers of awfulness, and it can be overwhelming looking at a list of places you should donate to, and when you don't have many donation dollars, you might just throw up your hands and go home. I'm tempted to throw bricks at the propaganda sticks like this guy, but I know that's not productive and would, in fact, be destructive to the cause, and also I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. I'm late. So... I'm going to go donate to the Center for Media Justice to help them defend black activists and end surveillance, because I guess that's something I can do about this digital concern I just discovered I am especially worried about as I write this. And then just, you know, I'll get to work on more stuff, too, one thing at a time. Even if I'm late and everyone's mad, I'm late. You're late. A lot of people are late. Let's get to work. So I wrote like two other blogs before this one finally sort of bubbled forth. Um, and I just, I, I decided not to go with the other two just because like, I'm not the person people need to hear from right now. <laughs> like, especially last week when I was writing, like I, I'm writing because I feel an obligation to write because I have a, a commitment to my writing practice and to sharing, you know, my thoughts with you, uh, my listeners and readers. And I, I felt like I, I need to say something, but it's an interesting thing where I feel like I'm, I'm not who you need to hear from. <laughs> But I did, I like, I had this idea of like, oh, I should like, you know, share my platform with someone. And then I'm like, it's, I'm not, it's a not, an, it's not a great offer. Like, I, I can put your blog on my thing and, you know, maybe 20 people will read it or listen to it. Come on. What a sweet deal. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, in the end, I felt like, um, while I am not the, the voice of this moment, I am a voice of this moment. And the people who are in my circle maybe would want to hear from me. Um, so, so I just went ahead. And I figure anyone who didn't need to hear from me wouldn't read it or listen to it. So there you go. It's e easily done, easily taken care of. And those that wanted to could and some did. So thank you to you listeners and readers. So um, updates on the New York part of this story. Um, we are still um, in a police state. Still, we still are. It's still happening. I think we were before and I just didn't realize it because it wasn't coming down on me. I mean, I knew it sucked, but I, I don't think I knew just how uh, how under its thumb we were, are, continue to be. Um, yeah, the curfew got lifted one day early. I think the, there was some pressure on the mayor to, to lift that eventually. And, it, oh, with one whole day left, he, he, he did. Um, but I'm hopeful there's a little bit of a shift in at least perspective, and there has been uh, a pledge 
to shift some funds uh, out of the police and over to community um, stuff. So um, that's good news. I don't know how much to celebrate it. It feels a little like uh, it's like not quite enough kind of thing. Like it's a political move and not an actual change making move. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Uh, but uh, there's a progress, a tiny bit of progress has been made in, in here. Uh, elsewhere, I think there's there's some very exciting changes happening, like in Minneapolis and uh, various other parts of the country. So um, there, there can be some hope, I think. Uh, so um, what I'm going to put for a song here is um, a song It does is not related to really hardly at all. Um, I'm only mostly going to put it here because it is already recorded. And since I don't really have the time space to, uh, to record a new song, this song is a song I recorded, um, for a donor to the audio drama podcast, the dragoning, um, as a thank you for uh, a donation. So I'm going to throw that here at the end. Um, It's part of that sort of Dragon City Radio thing that you may have heard on a previous podcast. Uh, So that'll be here in just a moment. Um, Meanwhile, normally at this point I would be plugging the donation buttons for the podcast. Um, But uh, maybe maybe this time you could donate to uh, a bail fund or the Center for Media Justice or there's a thing called Nourish NYC, which sends uh, food and supplies to protesters here. Uh, all of those things would be pretty awesome to do. So I will put those links in the show notes. And I thank you for listening and for fighting the good fight. This little dedicated podcast bit uh, was dedicated is dedicated to a real good fighter who fights the good fight a lot um so i wrote this uh this song for her uh but it is part of the dragon universe so i'm not sure it it'll make a hundred percent sense if you haven't been listening to the dragoning uh but it might uh you you may just need to know that in this particular universe Some women turn into dragons. Not all of them, but some of them do. And then when they turn into dragons, they often will eat men or burn them up with their flame fires. (laughs) Anyway, here is a little chunk from Dragon City Radio, um, which has a little intro and then the song. Thanks for listening. You are listening to Dragon City Radio. DRGN on your radio dial. We're taking your requests and dedications this evening. Please refrain from outing any dragons in your requests. Drop us a line or give us a call if you'd like to make a dedication. Coming up, we have a song for Donna, dedicated by the Dragon City Environmentalist Club, who want to remind everyone that dragons are part of nature too. They appreciate Donna's work on the DRA, the Dragon's Rights Amendment. Donna, this song is for you. Here's Joni Jill's That Is How She Knew. Marsha liked to go out hiking in the woods alone. She found quiet so in Camping on her own She woke up in her tent Feeling strange Like she'd had six Christmas dinners And her cells felt rearranged That is how she knew That is how she knew That is how she knew She was a dragon too Marches carried many signs. Ch- 
arches, those jerks should resign. Then when she came to, her friends all looked concerned. Her clothes were all askew, and a few signs looked all burned. That is how she knew. That is how she knew. That is how she knew. She was a dragon, too. She tries to remember what came before. Some man approached her. There's not much more. Was it something he said or something he did? In any case, the world's now Often went bird watching early in the morn. The other birders were very touching, but she was feeling torn. They were gathering at dawn to count birds all together, but sometimes it's not on. Birds aren't always a feather. That is how she knew. That is how she knew, that is how she knew, she was a dragon too, she was a dragon.